Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to round number 15 of 30 for the NSCA Fastenal Cup Series 2023 season. Yes, that's right. We're finally going to be flying the checkered flag on the first half of the season. And the last time out at Toronto, it was a bit of a shit show. I'm never running a string course race ever again in our 2003. And if I somehow ever run another street course race in NR2003, somebody, please reach through your screens and fucking slap me. Cole Dillon is on pole for Pocono, uh, and he really needs it after a string of bad luck really throughout this entire first half of the season. Ricky Freeman Jr. is in second position with Ray Dikita, Montoya, Goforth, Wallace, Merzlach, Hancock, Reinhardt, and English running out the top ten, which is a very, very, very surprising top 10 here as we do get set to go racing for another go here at Pocono one of the first races I think we're going to have multiple or the first uh, uh, return visit to a track as the green flag is quite obviously out we are already racing down into turn number one as the uh, ticker still showing the stuff from Toronto. Hold on. Give it a second to update. Dylan uh, out in the lead. You know what? Fuck it. We'll go ahead and let the ticker update here next time it scrolls by. Anyways, but Freeman Jr. hangs on the second. Go forth up to third. Merzlach in fourth. Kita back to fifth. And it's going to possibly lose out to Reinhardt here. Is to come through the corner to complete lap number one. You know, Lamas now. For, oh, as the caution's already out. What happened? Oh, and that is Arnstruff around further at the back of the field here. Take an immediate look at that. Oh, they were three wide. Arnstruff way out of line there. And he's just trying to... Looks like he's just trying to hold his line here. He's coming off... As they come off the corner, because he obviously can't go any higher. And then... Looks like Henson Jr. is just... Lack, full lack of awareness. And looks like if it wasn't Henson, it was going to be Sparks. And then that sends both of them into the wall. Sparks does get collected. As does last week's winner, Keen, and a couple of others. And that just sends the 84 around. So already, lap one, turn three. Caution is out. As the field comes back around, and it looks like there's a bit of a checkup towards the back. And now I'm wondering why the top four are separated from the rest, unless that was when, oh yeah, that must have been when the caution came out was after the top four had already gone by. So, already, issues early on here, as the field does not look to uh, pit here. As other than the 84 car. As cautions apparently take a long time here, I forgot. Of course, actually, we wouldn't know that because there was no cautions the first time out we were here. So he's, we get set to go racing once again here. So it is Dylan to Freeman to go forth to Merzlach to Reinhardt, the top five. Let's come off the corner. Pace car dives in and ready to once again go racing. And the green flags out. We're back to racing here at Pocono.
Go forth looking to take second away from Freeman as they run through three and, or excuse me, turn one. Merzlach can't follow. Now Mer um, here comes Reinhardt trying to take fourth away from the four. As he shot down that straightaway into turn three. Here comes Freeman now. He's going to try and make a move through turn three. And right, uh, try and take the second position and back away from go forth. Reinhardt's going to be right on the tail end of that 38 car. So now it is Dylan, Freeman, Reinhardt, Goforth, Fox in the top five, Takeda and O'Quinn now battling side by side for that sixth spot. Mers like back to seventh, but he might be losing that to the 99 Montoya. And then it looks like Lamas in ninth and English in tenth. So we see Goforth now going to try and take third away from Reinhardt. Coming around to complete the first tenth of a race. And Reinhardt now with a train of cars looking to her inside. Shit, I just realized I forgot to switch it back to the small spoiler for this race. So I guess we're running wings at a poke. That's now twice. I have forgotten to switch to a different size spoiler in a row for both Pocono races. Oh well. Lama sends it in turn three on Montoya and here comes English can try and make a move not on just Merzlach but also Montoya coming out of turn three. Now Freeman looks to the inside of Dylan as they head into turn one. Will we see a lead change? We will. Now here comes Goforth to the inside of the 60 as they head down the back straight away. So it's now two rookies leading Foxen with Dylan and Reinhardt now left being side by side. Blessed Brothers Racing really brought great setups to their, for their drivers today. By the looks of things, considering they're both in the top five. Foxen in third, Reinhardt in fifth. Keenan moves up in the sixth, now passing O'Quinn. Here comes Lom is going to try and take seventh from the 29, and the 99 is going to follow him up into eighth. Plaxco, meanwhile, in tenth, English in eleventh. Down the front straight away, Freeman led the last two laps, but here comes the 44 go forth. He's going to try and take the lead going here in a turn one with a shove from fellow Ford driver Cole Dillon. They're side by side off of turn number one, heading down Long Pond. I think that's straight away is Long Pond. I don't know. I don't remember. Ooh, and Cole Dillon thought about making the three wide going into the tunnel turn here. Turn two. Go for this. Still not quite clear of Freeman uh, until about halfway down the straightaway. Dylan, meanwhile, is going to send it and clear the 38 off into the entry of turn three here. 
they're still side by side as Lamas trying to crack the top five here. Lamas will get around Foxen for fifth. Reinhardt up to fourth. Freeman back to third. Reinhardt thought about trying to take a look to the inside of Freeman down the straightaway, but couldn't quite get there. Goforth did lead the lap, but he has Dylan right on his back end. Dylan wants to get back into the lead here. Reinhardt has now been passed by Lamas for fourth. Here comes Montoya, going to try and get around Reinhardt for fifth. Man, that's such a cool shot down the uh, straightaway there as Dylan looks to make a move on 44 going down the uh, straightaway there. And Free takes the lead. Here comes Freeman now to try and take second away from Goforth. Meanwhile, Montoya looks to the inside of the 48 going into turn three and is now to the inside of the 44. He really centered that corner. It's really sticking for him. Move Montoya up two spots in to third. Also, don't mind the ticker saying Williams. That, <laughs> as discussed at Toronto, Williams' last race was at uh, Toronto last time out. It is Theodore Cox back in the car for that number 15. You can tell because it is the plaque door number instead of the white door number. First race back, and he's eh, running eh, middle pack. Just outside the top half of it. As uh, Freeman's going back for the lead on Dillon. So far, three leaders and whatnot. But that might change if Montoya tries to go for the lead here. Ooh, Dillon trying to outbreak Freeman going into the tunnel turn. That's a bit interesting. They're still side by side. Now here comes Goforth to the inside of the 99, and he might try to get to the inside of Dylan here before the exit of the corner. Let's get onto the French quarter away. Freeman is clear of Dylan. And here comes Steffi Plaxco. He, she looks to make it three wide on both English and Lom is going in turn one, and will. And that is for fifth position. Lama's going to lose a whole bunch of spots, not just to English, but also to Kenningburg, to Merzlach. And English is going to lose a spot to Kenningburg as well as they go into the tunnel turn, maybe lose a spot to Merzlach. In fact, Lama's isn't done losing spots just this lap alone. Here comes Takeda as well, with a Lama hero as well. Of course, something uh, we haven't talked yet is the points position, or is the points situation. Of course, I'm just running this race right after Toronto, so I've not imported the standings from or for uh, the points into Score Four yet. So, or gotten the results from or the points from Score Four yet. So, unsure of what the exact point situation is, but I do believe Hunter Kiro might still be the points leader. Of course, with him being as deep in the field as he is, in fact, both he and Craig are all the way back here. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because Lamas is, of course, up here in battling 
in the top 10, top 5 area. Although I think he's actually just outside the top 10 now. We'll see here as the uh, cars come around here. So it's now Freeman leading Goforth, leading Montoya, leading Plaxico, leading Merzlach, the top five. But Merzlach's going to want more. Here he comes to try and take fourth from the 04. And, of course, after the... It's been a frustrating season for Merz, like to say the least. Got one win early in the season at Rockingham and just not had any good runs since then at all. In fact, actually DNF'd pretty early on in the uh, race at Toronto last time out. So he's going to try and look to maybe try and uh, reinvigorate the season in the second half, try to get as many points as he can to get back into the, at least the top 10 in points. Because he is well outside of that at the moment, going into at least Toronto. Because like I said, I haven't calculated the points for Toronto yet. Freeman still leads. Then is the Ford duel of Goforth and Montoya. Merzlach in fourth. English up to fifth. Dylan back to sixth. And of course, speaking of drivers who had bad runs at Toronto, both English and Dylan DNF'd at Toronto as well. Of course, English is in the top ten of points. And but Dylan is well outside the top 20. So he really needs to get his ass in gear here. And he's going to try and do that here at Pocono. He's already led the, a good chunk of the opening portion here. So already ready to complete lap 20 of 70. Oh, and Merzlach couldn't tell if he moved the 99 or... Yeah, the 99 just... Didn't turn going into turn two there, but he Montoya is gonna be passed by the four Merzlach. Here comes Dylan, meanwhile, to try and pass his team owner, and is gonna try and get around Montoya as well. Freeman still leads. You know, at the back of the pack, it looks like that's the 37 of uh, Robert. Or Roberto Crown Jr., who's running last, and yeah, it is. Of course, no part-time drivers in the field this time around. Just the uh, full-timers. Top 10 really s sorted themselves out here for the moment. Freeman's actually pulling away from Goforth just a little bit here. Where's like still in third? 
Dylan solidifying his fourth place position. Of course, to say that with the top ten settling down, and now here comes English going to try and take fifth away from Montoya. So looks like uh, Brent Kenningberg also looking to try to make a move towards the back of the top 10 there. And uh, English able to get around Montoya. Now here comes Alana Kiro. She's going to try and take sixth away and will. As we just take a look throughout the field here. So, uh, looks like Theodore Cox has kind of fallen back a little bit. He's now running, I think, just outside the top 30. He was running, you know, in the high 20, so not where he wants to run, of course. Last week's winner, Theod or Theodore Keen, also running quite poorly. In fact, by the looks of things, all three drivers who uh, finished on the podium last time out aren't running great. In fact, the highest running of the podium drivers last time out is uh, Nomina, and he's actually just outside the top 10 in 12th across the line last time out. Uh, Dylan is in third now, and looks like Goforth is starting to catch Freeman just a little bit. Now here comes Dylan. He's going to try and get to Goforth going into turn three, and will. English, meanwhile, trying to look to the inside of the four car through turn three here. Got to forget there's no turn four at Pocono, you know? <laughs> English... Actually, he's now fallen back a little bit, though. Maybe the outside lane, at least on corner exit of turn three, starting to come in a little bit. Now, go forth in danger, losing spot here to Merz like as they come down the uh, back straightaway here. In fact, English is going to clear go forth down the straightaway, and English can get alongside as they get into the corner. In fact, Goforth is losing a lot of spots here. He's already lost four spots this lap. So maybe something amiss on that 44 car? There's nothing in the chat box indicating that there is an issue. So it's Freeman to Dylan to Merzlak, the top three. Got English and Kiro running up the top five. As I say that, Dylan now looking to the inside of Freeman. Going to try and take the lead here going into turn three. Merzlak's going to try and follow the 60. Cole Dylan back to the lead here at Pocono. It really looks like the top. I don't know, 10, 11 cars have really started to break away from the rest of the field here. As Merz like is indeed going to take second from Freeman Jr., but here comes English now. He made a three wide, and now Plaxco is making a three wide again. Freeman Jr. is going to really lose a lot of spots here. English still side by side with Merzlak. He's going to take the spot. Now it's two Pontiac side by side here to round out the top five. Goforth looks like he's recovered a little bit. Now it's an English Motorsports 1 2. Cole Dillon leads. English second. Merzlak third. 
Couldn't tell who quite got fourth at the line. I think it was Plaxco with Lana Kiro being in fifth. Go forth with sixth. That might change, though. He has Kenny Burr's going to try and take the spot away. And you have Reinhardt in eighth. And then Freeman Jr. came across the line, I believe, in ninth. Lama's still in tenth. Montoya just outside in eleventh. And Nomina in twelfth. And that's really where the separation is. As a. Uh, Foxen in 13th. Akita's fallen all the way back to 14th. But then you have the 12 of Vaughn under fire from Hancock for the 14th position. Then behind them you have, I believe that's Evans Ross in 16th. Yes, and then you have Kenningberg in 17th, I believe. Back up front, English still in second, but he's was pretty close to Dylan going through turn one and two, but Dylan's pulled away a little bit coming off the corner here. Merzik's going to have a look for second now as they go into turn three, and it looks like Alana Kiro may have tried to get to. Uh... Oh, wait, sorry, that wasn't Kenningberg, that was Keshiel. Uh, back in 17th, uh, Kangberg, I forgot, was in the top 10. They're both running the Walmart cars, apparently. Merzak will clear English going through turn one. As will Plaxco, it's going to leave the six and the seven cars side by side for the fifth position. I mean, fourth position. English now falls back to fifth. Kangberg in sixth, but... He Alana Kiro's not settling for just fourth. She's going to try and take third away as they come through the tunnel turn and head turns or towards turn three. Closing in on the halfway mark of this event. It's Dylan to Merzak to Kiro to Plaxico to Kenningberg, the top five. Looks like Montoya has fallen back to 12th now. Nomina is in 11th. Make that 10th as he gets a run go forth. Here comes Montoya to try and take 11th from go forth as they head down. Front group of cars really starting to get separated here as the tail end of it starting to get caught up again by the uh, back half of the field here. No, well, not back, not just back half, just literally just everybody else. So looks like Crown Jr. is just running really off pace, kind of similar to how Williams was a couple of races ago at. Nashville. Man, I love this shot. Looking down from turn three to turn two. Lana Kiro is now taking second away from English. Or not English, uh, Merzlak. I believe Merzlak is trying to fight back on that outside lane as they head towards turn one. I believe they are now... Side by side, si uh, side by side they are. Merzak's gonna lose out here as they go through turn one. Move the seven car up into P2 now. So it is Ford, three Pontiacs, and a Toyota. The top five. Now Plaxico is gonna try and follow Alana Kiro through. Try and take third away from 
Merzlak as they head back towards turn three. Merzak's going to hold off, though. Now Kenningberg to the outside of the 04. But that's not going to hold out. And now here comes Freeman Jr. He's going to try and work his way back into the top five here. But can't quite do it. English back to seventh. Lamas is now back at eighth. Goforth has fallen back to... Or driven back up to ninth, I should say. Reinhardt's currently in 10th then you have Montoya 11th and then Foxen has caught Nomina for 12th as pit stops happening right as we reach the halfway mark so some of these guys are going to be very close on field of course last time out we had some guys pit right late in the going so, people who did not pit this time were as follows. Blade Runner, Crago, Cox, Merzlack. Or did these guys pit already? I'm going to double check. Oh yeah, these guys already pitted. They came down last time by. So that's going to be interesting for the fuel situation. So this, we see the rest of drivers who didn't pit, with the exception of Crown Jr., who might have already pitted, actually. Yeah, he was the first to pit. So he's a lap down now as the rest of these guys come down pit road. Of course, these guys were all in the top 10. It's going to be interesting to see where they fall in line to. Right now, provisionally, it is Cole Dillon leading, and then Alana Kiro in second. Here comes Merzlach off pit road now. And... It is Dylan who's going to be the leader. Merzlai comes out in fourth. Kenningberg fifth. Then it is the 38 of Freeman Jr. Then the 44 of Goforth. Blade Runner cracks the top 10 with his pit stop. Then it's Lamas, English, and I believe Hunter Kiro may have just cracked the top 10 with his pit stop as well. So obviously not what the rest of the field wanted to see. But then again, Kiro, Blade Runner, and others. They actually may need to pit again because they pitted just before the halfway mark. We will have to see. Guys like... Merzlach and 60 of English, or not 60 of English, the 60 of Dylan. English is in the six. Ooh, they're borderline. But then again, we did have that early, early caution. That all, and obviously, you know, running at 70 miles an hour rather than 170 miles an hour obviously does help the fuel economy. And because of the pit stops, the top three really separated from the rest of the field. Then you have Merzlach and Kenningberg kind of running together into no man's land. Then you have Goforth and Blade Runner running together into no man's land, but not too far behind them 
is a pack of five cars to round out basically the rest of the top ten and a little bit extra. Grego has made up some spots on that pit stop. The 15, the Cox, has made up some spots. In fact, I think the only guy not to make up any spots whatsoever is Roberto Crown Jr. But he has closed in a little bit as William Sparks, who really did not have a good race at uh, Toronto, hit the wall like three times. Got caught up in another couple of incidents. Sparks really off pace here as he's running second to last. Meanwhile, up front, it is Dylan and Alana Kiro. Alana Kiro get around Dylan. Become the fifth different winner of this the fifth different leader of this race. We'll find out. Really, everybody except for Hunter Kiro holding station at the moment. As well as Craigo trying to get around the two of Vaughn. And some racing further back you go. But then again, just pit stops made the field so spread out as we're already on lap 40 by the looks. Excuse me, 41. 30 to go in this race already. And we're just past the 36 minute mark. In fact, we're uh, 36 and a half minutes into this. Down front straight away for the 42nd time now today. Lankiro had a peak going into the corner. Couldn't quite get there, though. Hard to tell if like and Kenningberg are catching the top three. I don't think they are. Snowman will find as well now in sixth. Blade Runner seventh, go fourth, eighth. Though that might change here going into turn one. As here comes Hunter Kiro. Then Sean Ingles running out the top ten. And yeah, here comes Hunter Kiro really making a move here. Ricky Freeman back in 11th. Evan Lamas 12th. O'Quinn 13th. O2 Takeda in 14th. Fox and trying to take 14th away from uh, Montoya. Then you have Reinhardt in 16th. Krigo in 17th. Keschel in 18th. Heflin and Vaughn rounds out the top 20. Oop, up front and new leader, seven of Alana Kiro. Plaxco takes second away from Dylan as well. Going through turn one. Of course, all of these drivers really need good runs. And so far today, they have been having those good runs. Dylan, I think the furthest back in points of these three drivers. I think Alana Kiro is also the furthest up and Plaxico is not that far ahead of Dylan. I think she's in fact going into Toronto because like I mentioned earlier, didn't do score four yet for Toronto. Uh, eh, Plaxico uh, I think only a spot or two ahead of Dylan. Now Dylan's going to try and take second back away from Plaxico as they turn Go through turn one.
and we'll do so with ease. Looks like Montoya is actually pulled away from Blade Runner. It's starting to run down Kenningberg. Three wide here. Lamas loses a bunch of spots. And the Thanes are losing even more. Crown Jr. has gotten around Sparks and is now running in 36. Henson Jr. is running in 35th. Go forth. Look to the inside of uh, Dr. Carol could quick get there. Dylan now looking to the inside of Alana Kiro as they go into turn one. Can't quite get there. In fact, Alana pulls away from the 60 just a little bit. And Nomina has caught Kenningberg. It is now looking to the inside of the 82. As they head towards turn two. And he will take that spot away eat with ease. Just a few laps away from 20 to go. Three wide further back. That is uh, Kiro, Blade Runner, and English, I believe. Kiro unable to uh, maintain it, though, has to drop back in line behind English. Back up front, Dylan back to the lead. Plaxico unable to follow the take second away from Kiro. Nomina up to fourth. Murs like under fire for fifth. Kenningberg thinks better of it and falls back in line. Wanting to go at the line. Stillen to Kiro to Plaxco to Nomina to Merzlach to Kenningberg, the top six. English seventh, go forth eighth. 
Blade Runner 9th, and Freeman Jr. taking 10th away from Hunter Kiro. Meanwhile, further back, it is really making all three Pathfinder cars sticking together in a much more uh, positive context compared to Toronto. As O'Quinn is in 12th, the Foxen's right behind him. And then you have Montoya in 14th, and then Craig is running out the top 15 at the moment. But all that can change. And of course, as we mentioned at the pit stop cycle, some of these guys might not even be able to make it all the way. Of course, none of these guys might be able to make it all the way. Here comes Plaxico to the inside of Kiro. Can't quite get there before the corner. Go forth trying to get back around English. And is being practically pushed by Blade Runner going into the tunnel turn. English fighting hard on that outside lane. Can't quite hold off Go Forth, but doing a good job of staying ahead of the 77 at the moment. Not quite going to be able to do it here, though. Plaxico again trying to get to the inside of the 7, going down into turn number 1. Still can't quite do it. Nomina and Merzlikes pulled away from Kenningbrook just a little bit. Top three starting to get a little separated out here. O'Quinn Jr. Or O'Quinn is uh, starting to fall back a little bit. Under fire from both Crago and Heflin. Looking at it now, I do believe the uh, second group of three guys here, Nomina, Merzlach, and Kenningberg, are starting to catch the top three here a little bit. Just ever so slowly. Of course, Plaxico actually is starting to lose touch on uh, the top two. Just eh, we're so much more slowly than uh, these guys are uh, catching, so. Goes fourth, really starting to lead this second? 
third pack? I don't know how you'd classify it, but... The first big group of cars, I would say, compare... Monokiro practically pushing the 60 of uh, Dylan. Meanwhile, Nomina has caught up to this 04 of Plaxco. Now let's see if he tries to make a move for third. Closing in on 10 to go in this race, too. In fact, we're actually on 12 to go at right now. Hunter Kirill back up to the seventh position. Yep, and there goes Nomina. He is up into third now. So. Three different manufacturers in the top five now. Four in the top six. As we see Freeman Jr. trying to get back around Hunter Kiro for, well, now eighth position as Goforth has taken seventh. Once again, as Merzlach and Kenningberg starting to lose touch with the top four now. Although, I guess you can also say that about Plaxco as well, just not to an extent of Merzlach or even Kenningberg. As now, Nomina is going to try to take second away from Alana Kiro. Ten laps to go now at Pocono. And the f first half of the NSCA Cup Series season. There's Nomina fighting with Kiro for second place has allowed Dylan to pull away. Going to have to see how that shakes things up. Although the f fighting in the top four has really allowed Merzlach to close back in. Don't really think it's allowed Kenningberg to close in. Actually, in fact, Kenningberg's well behind the top five. Never mind. Kenningberg is just in no man's land right now. He might actually be caught by... Seventh on back before this is over. Nine laps to go now. And 
there's the move. Nobuna's trying to look to the inside, trying to get to Dylan. Ooh, Dylan might have cut the wall there. Entering corner. That's going to allow Lana Kira to look inside as the head turns turn three here. Merzlak makes the move on Plexco for fourth. Now looking to the inside with Dylan for third. So now Nomina will lead. Long Hero back to second. Dylan back to third. Merzlak has to fall back in line in fourth. Plexico still fifth. Go forth and Freeman really hounding each other for that seventh spot here late in the going. Of course, does anybody need to pit before the end of this one? Because they are flirting with running out of fuel on the last couple of laps here. Brown Jr. and Sparks, meanwhile, have caught Henson Jr. Actually, Kenningberg is far enough ahead of the top zone. I don't think he will actually be caught unless everybody, of course, needs to make pit stops. And if everybody does need to make a second pit stop, of course, that does mean that the race might be run on pit road. Is like once again trying to get around Dylan off corner exit. But because of how long the straight is, it's basically a DRS train. Break out of line, you're hitting a wall. Without the help of Plaxico behind him to try and get around Dylan, he's not going to do it unless he gets around Dylan and clears him by corner exit. It'll be five laps to go at the line. Does anybody pit, or can they stretch it out? Nobody on pit road this time, bye. Of course, Kenningberg has been running basically by himself this entire time. But he's also been running slower than the rest of the top five, so it's possible he might be saving something. Trying to make it to the end of the race. Four laps to go now. Three laps going out for the leaders. Does anybody have enough to make it? 
And Blade Runner is the first one to blink. He comes down pit road. Does anybody follow? No, nobody else comes down pit road. Blade Runner is the only one. Should be splash and go for the 77. He's already off pit road. Actually, can I see? Wait. Where did... The... Oh, the 5 must have pit. And the 37, because they're now in, amidst the back end of the field. Oh, caution's out! Caution is out here. Dylan Maddox crashes on the exit of the tunnel turn. That is going to end the race, I believe. And, ooh, just gets turned off the two of Vaughn. Does not look like there was any ill intent there. Just poor maneuvering of their cars. They will be taking the white flag this time by. Man, what terrible, terrible look for Tyler Blade Runner. Only person to pit, and then the caution comes out. Now the question is, of course, can all these guys remain under power? I guess the bigger question is, does anybody come down under the caution coming to the white flag? Theodore Cox does, and he's the only one. So the 15 car more than likely wasn't going to be able to make it. Under the caution, white flag, of course, is out. If Nomina can make it back around under his own power, he will get his first career win in the NSCA Cup Series. Which, honestly, we've had a long string of first-time career winners so far this season. You had Kenningberg back in Atlanta. You had Echo Evans Ross back at Homestead. So William Sparks at Charlotte. Theodore Keene three times over this season. Uh, his first being at Richmond. And then. Uh, Actually, just uh, two races ago at Nashville, you had uh, Alana Keschel getting her first career win as well. And it looks like he's going to do it. Coming across the line for our first under caution finish of the season since Daytona. It is going to be Nomina winning the race.
Lonnie Kiro will wind up second. Cool Dylan third. Merzlach fourth. Plexco in fifth. Kenningbrook sixth. Go forth in seventh. Freeman Jr. in eighth. Keen in ninth. Reinhardt tenth. Crago, Hunter Kiro, Mexiquin, Ricky Foxen, and Montoya rounding out the top 15. And uh, Roberto Crown Jr. and Stanley Henson Jr. Aside from Cox and Blade Runner are the only two other drivers to pit. But they pitted a lap earlier than Blade Runner, so. But they were at the tail end of the field, so they weren't even really in a position to grab anything, but. But that is Pocono. And the first half of the NSCA Fastenal Cup Series season for 2023. Next time around, if I recall correctly, is Orlando. I could be wrong about that. Don't hold me to it. But until then, thank you all so much for watching. And uh, as always, we'll catch you at the next race. So long, everybody.